All right. Um, this is sort of the step B, I guess, or part B of the uh, video on how to do sensitivity analysis for your forecasts. Um, I have basically gone through and completed um, identifying all of my hard-coded assumptions um, across the, uh, the, the different um, sheets. Uh, I've put their base values in here. I have converted the formulas on each of the sheets so that they read from these base values and checked it. Um, and I've also set up the sensitivity metrics as I talked about before so that they're reading from the values on the other sheets. Uh, and now I've kind of created, I've just copied and pasted um, all of the labels over here again because I'm going to want that at some future date possibly. Uh, but I don't need to look at them so closely now. And I've created a sheet or, or a table here for the assumptions. And so I've got all of the base assumptions and those are hard-coded values here. All right. Um, just copied and pasted it, shaded it in. And I've I've set up a alternative up and down value for them. And if you look, what I did is I just took the base value and multiplied it by 1.1 to go up and multiplied it by 0.9 to go down. So I am shifting each value by 10%. That's really the secret of a sensitivity analysis. You are not trying to guess at how far up you think you something might be or off or down. You're not trying to, at this stage, um, you know, get the range of what could actually happen. You're simply trying to understand that given some input, if it was, if you moved the value of that input up by 10% of what it is or down by 10% of what it is, how big of an impact would that have on your valuation metrics, in this case, equity and NPV? And so we're just creating the table now. Your job is effectively to now go in one by one, plug these values in, right, up and down, and go over and record this. So I'll show you how that goes. Again, we've got the base values now. I can't emphasize to you how important it is um, that w you, you always make sure that you're only changing one of these at a time. So in this case, let's just do one. We're going to say, oh, I need to change the student on campus up from 1,000 to 1,100, okay? So right now I'm gonna start with the base and I'm just gonna go ahead and put in, um, without changing it, I'm gonna go over here and put in the equity value. And I'm just gonna paste that as a value because guess what, the base value of this is gonna be the same every time, right? Because um, that's what we're starting with is that base. And I'll do the same thing for the NPV over here. Format that, pull it down, okay? Because those aren't gonna change, all right? So now I'm gonna start by uh, basically go from the 1,000 to the 1,100. Oh, it's gotta be 1,100, 11. So I'm gonna grab my equity value now for going up, paste that here. Grab my NPV value for that going up, paste it here. All right, now I'm going to flip that back over to be a 900. Grab my equity value, paste it here in the down. Grab my NVP, uh, got a copy. Paste it here, going down. Okay, and then I got to set that back to my base. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the next one and I'm going to go. 1.1 and I probably ought to change that formatting so I make sure that I see it. 1.1, grab my value, paste it in. Uh, Got to be a value, sorry. I'm gonna grab this value, paste it in as a value, and then change this down to 0.9. Okay, grab my value. Paste it, grab my value, paste it, all right. And then the last step for that is I want to see how big a change it is from the base. So I would have filled this out all the way down for both of them. 
And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to basically say this change is whatever my up value is minus my base. Okay, so a 10% change in the number of students on campus changes my equity value of this by $86,929. So that shows how sensitive it is. And if I do equals down minus the base, um, it's down by about $87,000. So it's not perfectly symmetrical. So a 10% drop isn't the same as a 10% increase. Just drag that formula down. This kind of highlights the point in my mind, and, and maybe I'm, you know, making this a little too simplistic. Um, you know what? I should not have done 90. I should have one done 0.9. Doesn't like that. 0 0.009. Let's do that. Parentheses, I mean, uh, these are sometimes a little bit tricky. So let's get the new equity down. Kind of a giveaway that there was such a big difference there. And let's get the new NPV down. If it does that properly. Okay. And so you can see we're not nearly as sensitive to what the starting percentage is. This is the month three percentage. So not nearly as sensitive to that. And we'll put that back to one percent. Okay. But what about that one? Let's go do the, this one. It's going to go to 22. Okay, so with it at 22, we'll do our up equity, up NPV, and we're going to take it down to 18. And I can tell you from experience, the most frustrating thing will be if you forget to reset the base on these things. That one's going to make you mad. The other one's going to make you mad is that you forgot to paste values, you put the formula over there, and next thing you know, the thing is not giving you the right numbers. So now we got to put that back to 20. So I just do that to make kind of a quick point here. Um, we're not very sensitive to a 10% change in the starting percentages because they really only affect you for the first 12 months. But we're still pretty sensitive to the year two assumption, which is sort of, for my model, how everything levels out. Okay, so I can take these formulas and just paste them over here to get the up and down for uh, NPV because it's doing the differences the same way. And you'll see NPV changes are a little bit bigger um, in some cases, maybe not so big in others. Uh, but that's what you're picking up here, okay, is, is you're doing, you know, how sensitive is this? Again, we're not making some judgment about how much we should move it. It's 10% up, 10% down. We'll, we'll do that in another step, all right? But that's sort of the step B, is that you need to do that all the way down so that you have all of those numbers, all right? Thanks. Got one step left, and that's just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how you can take that information and put it into a chart um, to, to help you uh, better understand what it is that is important versus not important um, in terms of the variables.